Well, hello, Texas FCA. It's Coach King. I'm here on the whiteboard. My friend, John O'Dell. Hey, look what I'm going to bring back. It's an autographed football from Case Keenum, who happened to come to Oklahoma to do a dinner. And John just gave me a football. So, John, thank you, brother. Oh, you're welcome. I bet I gave that, gave you one earlier and you just forgot. That's what happens to old guys. Well, I probably gave it to a donor. Uh, there you go. That's what you want to do. Give it away, baby. Give it away. Well, hey, John's going to take a few minutes to talk to us about taking care of donors. Uh, Oklahoma's a unique place because they've got an endowment for FCA. Uh, that's happened over a course of many years. Yes. Uh, but you've worked really hard on growing that, and you've got a diverse state. You've got lots of staff. You're one of the few places that own their own building, so you've got to do some operation things there. So taking care of the people that take care of you, I know is critical in your career and in your life. Tell our staff some secrets that you've seen and uncovered over your 45-year career. Well, uh Okay, I'm gonna I want to share with you just a couple of thoughts, and uh, uh, but donors are um, a vital part of the ministry of FCA, and I, I know that you'll think I'm kidding you when I share this with you, but I don't ask donors to give very much. I hardly, in fact, I hardly ever ask to give. Uh, I may ask through events that we do, whether it's. Uh, a golf tournament or a spring banquet or an auction or something like that to, you know where you invite them to to be a sponsor and blah 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 but as far as building the ministry financially I've 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 asked a few people but usually I've learned that um, they're gonna ask me um, uh, how they can give and so I'll give you an example when I first started working FCA um, in 1977, I came on staff, uh, $8,000 was my salary. And so you divide 12 months into 8,000 and that'll tell you how much I got paid every month. Um, but uh, the second year that I started working FCA, it was a one year commitment. Chuck Bowman hired me and said, hey, I need you to work one year. But at the end of one year, I thought, uh, man, I'd like to do this again because I'm starting to develop friendships and relationships with people. I was driving through a small town in southeast Oklahoma. It's called Atoka, Oklahoma, and I see a sign on the on the wall. That, I mean, on the highway that says uh, uh, "Cochran Heavy Equipment" and had the fish under it. And I thought, "Hey, I'm gonna go in here and meet the Cochran family and tell them about FCA." And man, if they're Christians; they ought to give. And so uh, I know. Uh, I mean, I had I I've never had fear of asking someone to, to be a part of the ministry, and if they open the door to ask them if they can give. So I pulled in this um, in rural town, uh, heavy equipment. I go in, I say, hey, is Mr. Cochran here? Mr. Cochran, the, the guy at the front said, hey, Morris, there's a guy here to meet you. And the guy came out to meet me. He was, uh, oh, he was probably about four years older than me. And I uh, introduced myself, told him I was with FCA. We had FCA in the school. and. Uh, you know, FCA is making a difference. I saw the fish sign, you know, on your sign. I, I figured you're a Christian and would love for you to just be a part of FCA. And he asked me the question. He says, well, how would you like for me to be a part of FCA? And I said, well, there's, there's really three ways. I'd love for you to, to host um, FCA in your home someday uh, so that you can see what FCA is doing. Uh, since you're a Christian, uh, I'd love for you to be praying for the ministry. And since you asked, how can you help? Would you ever consider giving to FCA? And uh, Morris, I'll never forget, he looked at me and said, you know what? I've got uh, four children. Uh, I want them to, to be able to see the athletes of our community in a Christian environment. So yes, we'll host FCA in our home. Secondly, praying's easy. I'll, I'll, make, I'll pray for FCA, it's a priority. And thirdly, he goes, absolutely, I'd love to give. How much, how much would you want to give? How much would you like for me to give? Well, I'm sitting there, I'm not prepared to ask for a number. And I just said, uh, well, Morris, how about $1,000? And he goes, all right, is that it? And I went, dang it, I should have asked for more. And, uh, but, you know, he opened the door. I was able to answer his question with can you host, can you pray, and can you give? Because if I would have just went in and said, hey, Mr. Cochran, I'm John O'Dell, would you give to FCA? He probably would have never given a gift to FCA. 
So Morris and I developed a good friendship. He lived about 60 miles from my home at that time when I was living in Ada, Oklahoma. And I, every time I would drive through the town, I would stop and see him. So I started building a relationship with him because he's one of the people that we met. About six or seven years later, Morris and I had a great friendship. I get a call from his wife, Cindy, and their youngest son was accidentally shot and killed in a horrible accident. I got in my car, I drove down, and I sat with Morris for 48 hours, never said a word. But just being there gave him encouragement, and my love for him came from that very first time that I saw that fish on that sign. From that point to that point of walking through him of losing his son to today, we have one of the greatest friendships because of really the opportunity to serve and to invest, never really asking until he allowed me to ask. And so guys, three years ago, my grandson uh, had a heat stroke and was in the ICU for 13 days. I got a phone call from Morris Cochran. Morris said, would you like for me to come and sit with you for two days? And man, I got emotional. And I said, Morris, your phone call alone does that. So as you work with donors, as you learn to take care of donors, you'll never have to ask a donor for their financial support as you serve them and invest your life into their life. So that was one story. You know, you said a while ago in, in a previous video, if the Lord prompts you, and obviously in that story, you saw that fish and the Lord prompted you. So being, being in tune with the Spirit and letting Him lead you, but then being obedient and following. Because I know in my life sometimes that's the, that's the hard part. Right. You know, something comes to my mind. Do I follow through with it or I, eh, now I'm doing something else. Follow through. Follow through. Follow if, through. If the Lord prompts you, Absolutely. be attuned to that and follow through. Yeah. But, but a lot of times you can you can ask when I'm always looking for a crack in the door to be able to allow them to have the opportunity to be a part of this ministry. And I will tell you, there's a lot of times people don't give, but the majority of times they'll open up to the opportunity. You know, some people like to give a large gift. Some people will like. So I'll share another gift with you. I mean, another thing. So in 2008, uh, we, had a, we, we had a dedication for this office building. And uh, there was a guy named Steve Payne that came. And Steve uh, had never heard of FCA, never been around FCA. But at that time, my wife was working in a business uh, in, a, in the oil field. She was a front desk. And he, Steve was their insurance guy. And Steve you know, was talking to Vicki. And Vicki said, hey, uh, come by and see my, uh, our, our FCA office that we're getting ready to, get to, to open. Uh, the dedication. So anyway, long story short, Steve came, uh, met him that day, and he said, hey, would you have time to have lunch next week? And I said, sure. So I followed up. We had lunch, and he said, man, I was so impressed with how you guys did your dedication that I think I need to be a part of giving to FCA. And I'm sitting there going, are you kidding me? This is awesome. And uh, I said, well, gosh, thanks, Steve. And uh, he gave me a check for $5,000. And he, said, and he shared this. He goes, I want you to know this is a sacrificial gift for me and my wife. And God prompted me right then to give that gift back to him. So I did. I said, Steve, if it's a sacrificial gift, I, I, don't, I do not want your giving to be sacrificial to FCA. And uh, so I'm going to give this back to you. And he goes, what? I've never had somebody give a gift back to me. And I said, well, I said, uh, would you consider... If you really want to give to FCA, would you consider giving $500 a month to FCA? And within a year, that'll be, that'll make up your $5,000 gift. And listen, I'm smart enough to know that's 6,000 bucks. But anyway, he said, uh, man, if I can give monthly, I, that would be no problem for us. So he took the check, he tore it up, and uh, he said, how do I do it? So I told him how to be a monthly supporter. That was 2008. 2022, he has never missed giving 
$500 a month to FCA. And again, that was God prompting me to give that check back to him, not having any idea that we're gonna ask for $500 a month, but that's just how the conversation went. And honestly, uh, I can tell you story after story of how God, by me rejecting a gift, how the people, because literally God shared with me one time, a guy wanted to give me $10,000 and I said, I don't want your gift until we become friends. I want to build a relationship with you. When we build a relationship, then you'll give $10,000 more than once. And this gentleman allowed me the opportunity to develop a relationship with him. And he ended up becoming a very large donor in FCA. So <clears throat> just follow God's lead. Uh, when, the, when the cracks open in the door, step through it. Uh, be bold to, uh, um, to not only ask people to support, but to pray and to be actively, actively involved. You know, <coughs> our friend John Randalls. Absolutely. Always talked about how do you give people on the outside an opportunity to come inside and see. And you talked about looking for the crack in the door. And when you get that, we have a door to open too. Absolutely. And you said it right here. I mean, you open the door for your friend to see how they can be involved. So we have to be prepared once they let us in to let them in. Absolutely. And not to be selfish about it because it's God's gift. And uh, what you've shown is that God's going to take care of the ministry as long as we take care of the people that are involved in it. Absolutely. And I, I will tell you this, never be nervous about looking for that door to walk through to ask people to be involved with FCA. God has already prepared their heart. He is using you as a vehicle to let them become more involved with what you're doing, whether it's financially, whether it's as a volunteer, uh, whether as a host, whatever it may be. Follow that lead. Don't be nervous. That's, that's a, the spiritual battle that you're wrestling with. Be confident. Don't be cocky, but be confident. Let them know what you're doing. Encourage them to be a part. And once they become a part, they'll become a giver for life. And they'll probably become your friend. Absolutely. John, great wisdom. Thank you for taking all this time to love and support Texas FCA. God bless you, my friend. Hey, love you, Steve. Hey, I love it. FCA in Texas, man. It was fun being a part of uh, developing a great relationship with guys like Steve Keenum and Wade and uh, Derwood Keaton and Jim Falk and the names go on and on and on that I could Reagan Lambert and uh, gosh Ben and I you know I, I've, I've been blessed uh, to, to be able to have incredible friends uh, throughout the country but uh, the guys in Texas you guys do it right keep being leaders um, keep impacting lives for Christ uh, because um, Believe it or not, you know, a lot of people say, you know, Christ doesn't need us and Christ, and he doesn't. But honestly, he needs us to be out there being leaders for him, impacting lives for Jesus Christ. You can do it, uh, whether it's uh, whatever your role is. So have fun. And if you ever don't have fun doing this, then don't do this. FCA has never been a job to me. And once it started becoming a job, I knew that it was time to leave. So have fun and whatever your role is in the ministry of FCA. Next time you come to Texas, we're going to go find that trophy and wrestle it away because it belongs on your mantle. Absolutely. See you, Texas FCA. Coach Keenan, we'll see you soon.